my name is Sophia Colette Eric, and I am an art historian, academic researcher, and curator of multisensory experiences. Right now, my main work is with the European funded project Odoropa, which advocates for smells and smelling as important to Europe's cultural heritage. And today on the Internet of Senses podcast for the sense of smell, we have Rachel Hertz with us. And I'm very excited to interview her today. She is a neuroscientist and world leading expert on the psychological science of smell. She has been actively conducting research on the senses, emotion, perception, motivated behavior, and cognition since 1990. She has published 100 original research articles and has re received numerous awards and grants and is on the faculty at Brown University, a professional consultant to various aroma related industries and is frequently called upon as an expert witness in legal cases involving the sense of smell. She's also actively involved in outreach, advocacy and education on the senses of smell and flavor and is the author of several academic and popular science books. So hello, Rachel, and thank you for joining me today. Hello, Sophia, it's wonderful to be here. So before we start, I wanna mention that uh, our podcast today has been created in collaboration with the World Smell and Taste Association, which is a nonprofit organization dedicated to fostering appreciation and understanding of vital yet often overlooked senses of taste and smell. And the podcast comes out in celebration of World Taste and Smell Day, which happens every year on September 14th. And of course, Rachel, myself, and the Internet of Senses team support efforts like these. And in fact, it turns out that Rachel is part of the World Smell and Taste Association's advisory board. So with that, I will also give you a moment to introduce yourself and explain all the different types of outreach of projects and institutions that you're involved in. Well, thank you so much, Sophia. It's a really a delight to be speaking with you today about everything smell. And in terms of my research, or rather my advocacy, education, and outreach arms, so to speak. So I'm involved, as you just said, in the World Taste and Smell Association. I'm on their advisory board in their innovation division. I'm also an um, advisory board member of the Smell and Taste Association of North America. That's also called STANA, as well as a founding member of the advisory board of Fifth Sense, which is a UK-based charity similarly devoted to people with smell and taste loss, but especially the sense of smell. And you know, all these organizations are really there for advocacy and helping people who have these losses find a community and find resources and the latest possibilities for them. In addition to that, I'm actually also uh, very heavily involved in an organization called ACHEMS or the Association for Chemo Reception Sciences. This is a scientific organization with an annual meeting, but also has a, a lot of sort of other activities that are connected to it, including monthly presentations and so forth. And I've been heavily involved in their executive committee. I'm currently the chair of the strategic planning committee. And I've also was the person who first initiated a Wikipedia page for this organization so that people could also find out more about it and, and have it as a resource, as well as when we were in various locations helping establish an outreach day for local communities and you know, teach kids, for example, about this, the senses of smell and taste. I'm also on the program committee for the International Society of Neurogastronomy that focuses more on taste and flavor, but also obviously aroma. And in terms of popular science books that I've written, my first book was called The Scent of Desire, and it's everything you ever wanted to know about the sense of smell. My second book was called That's Disgusting. And although it may seem like a little bit of a stretch, it's actually very much based on the sense of taste. And my most recent book is called Why You Eat What You Eat, The Science Behind Our Relationship with Food. And the, the title basically says it all. So those are my primary sort of like external activities. I'm also, as you mentioned, on the faculty at Brown University, where I've been teaching a course recently on the sense of smell, perception, cognition, health, and technology. So it's all the latest and greatest about the sense of smell. It's been really fun. It's amazing. I think, yeah. I, I also, I wanted to, first, before we started the interview, I wanted to really thank you for, for your research and for all of your work, because especially as a, as a female in science and and then choosing to uh, research the sense of smell, I'm sure that was not the easiest path, um, but also it could 
also be very fun. But yeah, I just really wanted to thank you for your research and just in, like initiate how or uh, appreciate you for for all this work and and the impact that you've left since you've started uh, researching, which of course we will talk about today. But I just wanted to take a moment to say that <laughs> to you. Well, I really appreciate you saying that because actually, interestingly enough, maybe not surprisingly, when I was in graduate school and starting to embark on this path, which was not necessarily the way that I thought I was going to get started, I was repeatedly told by professors, this is a terrible mistake. Nobody cares about the sense of smell, which uh, unfortunately still prevails to a certain extent, and that, you know, you're never going to get a job. This is a really bad direction. <laughs> Don't go there. Yeah. So it's very heartwarming to hear that, you know, that there's appreciation even though it's been it's been a little bit of a difficult route but anyway thank you very much Sophia yeah I can really imagine and and empathize with it a bit uh...